Hello and welcome back to another session. Today's session is going to be about AWS Cognito. This service helps in setting up authentication and authorization for your web applications. It takes care of sign up, sign in, as well as integrating with identity providers. So you need not spend time on actually setting up the authentication of your application. Instead, you can utilize the time to develop your application itself. Let's get started. Okay, so we are in the console. Let's get into the Cognito section. It has only two concepts, user pools and identity pools. User pool is used to set up sign in and sign up for users to get authenticated to your application. So it maintains a repository of your users and generates access token to manage their access. Whereas the identity pool is used to grant user access to other AWS services by generating temporary credentials. Both these pools can be used together to set up access to AWS services for users in user pool. So let's first create a user pool. As you can see, the only required parameter is the user pool name and AWS sets the default values for the rest of the attributes. Anyhow, let's step through the settings and see what are the default values. The first section contains the user attributes, like what are the sign-in options you want to give the user. Either the, you can allow the user to sign in through their username or even their email address or even phone number. I'm just going with the default option of username for now. And then you have to enable the case sensitivity for the user input. So emails with different cases are considered unique. You can select the attributes that you want to store for a user like name, address, first name, last name. And if you don't find any attribute in the list, then you can even create your own attribute. How know that this, uh, these are not changeable ones you have set and created the user pool. And in the next section, you get to choose the password strength rules and choose if a user can sign up themselves or only the admin can create the user. Admin option can be used in case of confined applications. If admin is creating the user, then you will create a temporary password and Cognito lets you specify an expiry date for that password. So the password expires within seven days here in case the user doesn't log in within that period. Then you can opt for enabling MFA based authentication and how to recover the user account when they lose their password. And also you can uh, set up the verification attributes which you want to uh, user to use it in case they lose their password or during their first setup. So when the user sign in for the first time, you will send an email or the SMS in order to send the code or the temporary password. So for that, you can either use the default Cognito option or set up a SES separately and use it here can even modify the email content and the structure. If you use default Cognito, there is a limit of only 50 emails per day. So you can't sign up more than 50 users if you choose that. So it depends on the uh, on your particular use case. Next section, you can add some optional tags for the user pool. And uh, the next section is if you want to remember any of your user devices. Then creating app clients, we will need this. However, let's do it after the user pool uh, creation. The final section is triggers. It allows you to run custom code in various stages of the authentication. You can write Lambda functions and select an event trigger to your Lambda function to execute. And for example, if you want to uh, say create a DynamoDB entry while the user signs up, then you can attach a Lambda to the pre sign up event, uh, which does that for you. There are several such events like post authentication, user migration, and a lot of triggers. So you can create Lambda functions with your custom code and attach it to any of the authentication stages. Finally, you get to review the selected options and create the user pool. Once created, you will get a unique ID for each user pool called the user pool ID. 
which will be used in the various places uh, in order to reference the user pool. So we have a user pool now. Let's uh, create the domain and set up the app client. So you have to select a domain where you want the Cognito to host the UI. So it can be either Amazon Cognito domain or you can specify your own domain. So in this case, I'm going to use the Cognito domain. And note that the domain name should be unique. So you can opt for any name and check for the availability. If the pool name is, if the domain name is available, then you can go ahead and create the domain. So we have created the domain. And then the last step is to create the app client where you specify your actual application details. You can have more than one cl app client associated to the user pool. So uh, you have to specify your app client name. This is just to identify the app uniquely within Cognito. So it can be anything. And Cognito creates tokens in order to authenticate and manage the user. These are called as the access tokens and you can use them in your APIs for authorization purposes. You can set the various expiration times for the token for refreshing and expiration times. And then you can skip the uh, client secret generation as this is a public app. You can use it in case of private apps if you have any specific OAuth standards to meet. And you can enable or disable the various auth flows. You can set it as per your application requirement. So in this case, I'm going to select all the auth flow configurations. It's pretty much straightforward how you are going to allow the authentication mechanism, like either username, password. Then I'm enabling the uh, security config as well. And finally, here we are in the app client settings where you have to select all the identity providers that apply. In this case, we just have Cognito user pool. And then you enter the sign in and sign out URLs for your application. These can be more than one URL and you have to specify them as comma separated uh, values. And in the callback URL, so this will be the place where your users will end up once they sign in with the hosted UI. So I'm just mocking that and using Amazon.com. And same thing with the sign out URL. And then comes the auth, uh, OAuth flows and scopes. So you have three options uh, that is authorization code grant, implicit grant, and client credentials. So each has different ways of passing the token. So authorization code grant passes the code and then which is used to generate the token. And implicit grant directly passes the token and client credentials passes the credentials directly. So if you are using client credentials, then you have to enable generating client secret. So I'm just going with authorization code grant and implicit grant for now. And the OAuth scopes is how you're going to allow your uh, scopes to be validated. So I'm just opting for everything, phone, email, open ID, as well as the profile. So we are done with it. So the entire user pool is set up now. So let's launch the uh, UI. So this is a simple UI you get with Cognito itself. You can customize this uh, by, you, by adding custom CSS. So we don't have any user yet. So let's create a new user. So once you create this user, this sends out, uh, so this is just a normal signup process. So after creating the user, it sends out a verification code. You can verify this code by creating a Lambda or even by using a Lambda trigger. 
If not, then you can go through the normal verification process. You would have received a code to the email address that you have specified here. Also notice that this is not required for other IDP types like SAML or social IDPs. In those cases, it's automatically verified as the authentication happens through the IDP which is specified. Okay, so I have received the code and let's enter the code now. Okay, that's it. So we are in and you could see that there is a code passed here which is generated by the auth code generation option. So that is the user pool setup. Okay, that's it for today guys. Hope you found it useful. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. See you soon in the next video.